I received a question recently across the internet uh, about a proof that I is equal to 1. I, the imaginary unit, is simply equal to 1. And I was asked if I could resolve the problem in the proof, because I is obviously not the same thing as 1. And I think I at least have some thoughts on the matter. So let me start by showing you the proof. I is the square root of negative 1. At least that's one way to define it. And the square root, remember, can be written as an exponent of 1 half. So we can write i is negative 1 to the 1 half. And 1 half, of course, is the same thing as 2 fourths. So I could say i is negative 1 to the 2 fourths. And an exponent, remember, a rational exponent, an exponent that is a fraction, involves a numerator that is a power and a denominator that is a root. So this is a squared and a fourth root. And I could break this up into two steps like this. i is negative 1 squared, and then all that to the power of 1 fourth. Now, negative 1 squared, well, that's easy. That's just negative 1 times negative 1. That's positive 1. So here, that's positive 1. So this is just 1 to the 1 fourth. And 1 to the 1 fourth is just 1. So there you have it, i equals 1. How about that? Now what's the problem here? i, the imaginary unit, is not the same thing as 1, the real number unit. So what's the problem? And um, I think we can shed some light on it by looking at this step right here. There's another way that I could write that step. I could write i is equal to, instead of doing the, the squaring first and then the 1 fourth, I can do the 1 fourth first and then the squaring. So I could say this is negative 1 to the 1 fourth and then squared. And then to try to make sense of this step, I'm going to break it up into pieces just a little bit further. The negative 1 to the 1 fourth could be written like this, negative 1 to the 1 half to the 1 half. See that power of 1 half raised to a power of 1 half will give me a power of 1 fourth, and then all that is squared. Okay, now how do I think about this? Well, look at this. This is negative 1 to the 1 half. That right there is i. Okay, that's the square root of negative 1, so that's just i. So this is really i to the 1 half squared. So I have i to the 1 half squared. So what I'm doing here is looking at the, the, the square root of i. And there's two ways to think about that. So I'm going to follow, follow two branches of, of thinking here. One here and one here. And let's see what we get. Well, if I think about the square root of something squared, remember our definition here of absolute value. The, a lot of textbooks will define the absolute value of a as the square root of a squared. Okay, so here I have the square root of i squared. So if I think of this as just the square root of i squared, well, that must be the absolute value of i. And what is absolute value? Well, that's the distance from the origin. So this actually makes sense here. I'm thinking of the distance that i is from the origin. And if I look at my complex plane where I have real numbers here and imaginary numbers here, well, where is i? Well, it's right there. That distance right there is one unit from the origin. So the absolute value of i should just be 1. That's what we get here. But that's only if we think about the, this definition of the square root of a number squared is its absolute value. This operation right here, the principal second root, is really only defined for real numbers. And so this, uh, this definition here is our, our, our real number answer in this case. It's really the absolute value of i because that's one way to interpret this step. Okay, but there's another way to interpret this step. Let's follow a chain of reasoning down here. Okay, if I want to do the square root of i squared, I need a definition that allows for the square root of a complex number. 
and we actually have a definition of the square root of a complex number. The square root of i is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 times 1 plus i. And you can get that from de Mavre's theorem, but I think it's actually easier just to see it in the complex plane. So let me sketch that real quick. If we think about the unit circle in the complex plane, i is right there, so let's label these real axis and imaginary axis. And remember that a, a i raised to a power can be thought of as a rotation around the complex plane. So this is i to the first is right there, i squared is negative one, i cubed is negative i, and so on. So i to the one half would be right there. This point, right in the middle of that quadrant, that's i to the one half, or the square root of i. And if you remember your trigonometry, you know that that's a 45 degree angle, and that this length is square root of 2 over 2, and that length is square root of 2 over 2. So we have square root of 2 over 2 on the real axis, and square root of 2 over 2 on the imaginary axis. So this can be written as square root of 2 over 2, 1 plus i. See that square root of 2 over 2 is our real part, and square root of 2 over 2 is our imaginary part. So the square root of i is simply that. So take that idea back here. This is what we have. The square root of i, right there. So it's equal to this. So the square root of i squared, if I square that, okay, how do I square this thing? Well, that will be the square root of 2 over 2 squared plus this squared. So what does that give me? Well, square root of 2 over 2 squared is just 2 over 4. And then 1 plus i squared is just 1 plus i times 1 plus i. And we can do a FOIL, which will be 1 plus 2i plus i squared. Okay, uh, 2 over 4 is just a half, so let's write 1 half. And then look here, 1 and i squared. i squared is just negative 1, so those cancel out. And we're just left with 2i and one-half times two i is just i. So if we really think of this properly in terms of complex numbers and a proper definition of a complex square root right there, instead of getting i equals one, i does in fact equal i.